do I see myself making social media my full-time job? Hi guys, my name is Lessa. We talk about all things luxury shopping and handbags. If you love those things, make sure to subscribe, hit that bell notification. I do post videos every week. So I asked you guys on my Instagram, what burning questions you guys had, whether that be about bags or like content creation, wedding, like all of this stuff. So we're gonna break it down kind of by each like almost category, if you will. Um, so we'll start with the bags and I wanna apologize in advance. If I didn't get a chance to answer all of your questions, I will try to answer them on my Instagram um, because there were a lot of questions and I'm trying to answer like the more popular questions, you know, things like that. Um, otherwise we're gonna be sitting here for probably like two, three hours. So the first question and probably the most popular question is how can I afford handbags? Um, and, and it kinda is two parts to this answer. Um, one, I work two jobs. I have my regular nine to five job and then I also create content. And kind of the main ways that content creators make money is through brand partnerships, affiliate marketing links. So any kind of, anytime like someone shares a link on their Instagram story, more often than not, they get commission off that, you know, things like that. I also feel like I'm good at like picking and choosing what I want to splurge on. I think before I was very picky about like sticking to a budget. Like for example, I feel like before I was very like particular and I was like, okay, we've already exceeded the amount of times that we have like gone out to eat for the month. Maybe Maybe let's cut back, let's eat at home, you know, things like that. Now I just look for things that I can kind of cut out in my day-to-day -day life. Like for example, I am paying like $2 a month for Hulu with ads. Could I be paying, I think it's like $16 for the non-ads version? Yes, absolutely. But these are like, it's like little things like that, that you're able to cut back on certain aspects of your life. So then you can save a little bit more towards putting it and like put it towards a bag or designer item. Okay, so the next question is, does your man buy you bags? And yes, he has, but not at the rate that I think you guys think he does. Um, I think that there's like a misconception that like, he buys all of my bags. I like sit at home, I don't do anything. And like, that's definitely not the case. He's purchased two bags for me in this almost seven years that we've been together. Um, he bought my Louis Vuitton Neo Noe. This was an anniversary gift. I don't even know how many years ago this was, probably like three years ago. Um, this was an anniversary gift. This was a bag that I was like eyeing for a really long time. And I think he was like, yeah, like I'll just get it for you. Um, and then the next bag, the second bag he got was the Palen Numero set. Um, this was the first Palen bag. And I think that while this wasn't like a luxury designer bag, this was something that meant a lot to me because it was him kind of like being like, hey, I know you're just starting out with this whole TikTok thing. We don't know if it's gonna, you know, pick up or anything like that, but I know that you've been wanting to get this bag so that you can create content with it and review. And this is my way of showing that I support you doing this. So but i think that's the last bag he got um yeah i think that's the last bag he got so the short answer is no uh, but he has in the past um and i think usually when i know that i can like get the bag myself i'll usually do that and then he'll get something a little bit more sentimental or sometimes he'll just find other things to like give as gifts okay the next question is what is your favorite designer currently um i want to say probably right now celine i've been definitely in a celine kick recently um i don't know why i just like everything that they've been coming out with i really like they're ready to wear they're bags or SLGs, just everything. What helps you decide your next luxury purchase if you're stuck between two? Honestly, I'm very type A. I make a list. Um, you always know I keep everything on a wish list. So I usually try to have things stay on the wish list for like a few months first, maybe a few weeks. Let's, let's say a few weeks, at least a few weeks, maybe a few months and see if I still like that item the longer that it stays on that list. If I find myself like, not wanting that item or I want something more than the original item that was added to the list, then that's a telltale sign to like not get it. But if you're deciding between two, I really make like a pros and cons list. Like what's the pros of this bag? What's the cons of this bag? And do the pros and cons like outweigh each other? Which one which one gets you excited? And I feel like I can't tell you that. I can't be like, oh yeah, this bag is obviously better than this bag. I think it has to come from you and you have to decide which one you like and which one you don't like. Okay, the next question is what are your everyday accessories? And you're, this is, this is it. Um, so usually I'll have some sort of like gold earrings on. These ones I changed up in the last few weeks, but I normally wear like the bold huggy hoops. Um, obviously the engagement ring. And then this is the Van Cleef Sweet Alhambra. And then this is a um, tennis bracelet from the same place that we got the ring from. 
Um, and then here on this hand, we have the Tiffany tea ring. And then this one is actually from a jury. Um, this is the Signet ring. And I, this is, this is it. Oh, and my necklace. Um, and this one is the, this is the Atlas necklace from Tiffany's. This is the older Atlas collection. Um, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. I feel like I keep it very simple and I also don't take things off. Like I leave pretty much everything, but the, this hand, like I leave it on. So yeah. Okay. What brands do you feel like are the best quality for the price? Um, I think off the top of my head, I have to say Loewe and Celine. I think both of these brands are around the low 2000s to like maybe 3500 um, price range. I think the quality is top tier, especially Loewe. I love how understated it is. I love how you can wear it multiple different ways. And I love all the color variety that it comes in. Um, Celine, I just currently have soft spots for, so we're kind of going to lump it in. But if you're looking for the best bang for your buck, for the best quality, for the most like kind of like understated look, I think Loewe is the way to go. The next question is, since you're the queen of black shoulder bags, which one is your favorite and why? I have a lot of black shoulder bags. Um, and I have to say the one that I gravitate towards the most is the Celine Triumph, at least within the last like six to eight months. Um, I love how comfortable this sits. And I think that's probably why I gravitate towards this one a lot. Um, it matches with every single outfit. It's pretty carefree for the most part. Um, I will have to say though, the one thing that like irks me and I usually, if I know I have to get in and out of this bag a lot, I will not be using this bag or we're going to be using Apple Pay. Um, the closure is not the easiest to get in and out of, but it's also not as difficult as some of the other bags that I have. So not the end of the world, but this is definitely one of my most used black handbags. Okay, so the next question is, what bag would you recommend that gives Birkin vibes, but not obvious ripoff? So there's two that I can think of off the top of my head. If you're looking for a luxury designer option, I think the YSL Manhattan looks very similar, very classy, very boss vibes as the Birkin. Obviously Manhattan is a little bit more structured compared to the Birkin, um, but I do think it does have very similar elements. Um, another bag, if you're looking for a more like affordable option, the Tory Burch, I forgot the name of this and I'll leave a picture here for you guys. Um, but I feel like this Tory Burch option also looks pretty similar. And I do like that it comes in different sizes as well. So, um, there's kind of two very different price points. Okay. The next question is, can you talk about bag maintenance and storage? So as you can see kind of behind me, most of my bags are actually not out on out like not in their dust bag so ever since i had this wardrobe built um all of my bags sit inside so they're away from sunlight um they're more or less dust free um i do not follow best practices so let me preface that i am not the best person to ask if you're looking for someone who will like lead by example i can tell you what you should be doing not to say that I necessarily do it just because when I am filming, it's a lot easier to just have everything behind me and sit down and film during the weekends instead of like taking everything out, putting it away, you know, all of that. But in terms of storage, what you should do is leave it outside of the box. Do not put the bag in the box and just put it in the dust bag itself away from direct sunlight. Um, so if you had a wardrobe like this or you had a closet like this, you pretty much just put it in the dust bag and then like leave it away from sunlight. And then in terms of cleaning and care, I do have a video on this. I don't clean my bags as much as I would like to admit. I think if you use your bags consistently um, every single day, I think that you should be cleaning your bags a little bit more often. But since I rotate so many bags kind of in and out, I don't use them and I don't clean them as much as I should. Um, but I do have a video on it. I think on average, you should be cleaning and conditioning your bags once every six months. Um, and then they have different kits. Um, I do like the one that I have from Havri Deluxe, um, but I think they the, you can also find other kits as well and remember to clean the bag and then condition it and then you can always get like a protector spray as well um i've only protected my bags with untreated leather which is like the um the vachetta on like neverfull or like louis vuitton um and that i've used apple guard and then for my dior book tote i sprayed with carbon pro so those are really the only two things i think that you don't really need to overthink it they're not going to you know just sit there and break um i haven't had any issues with uh, my bags other than that one louis vuitton bag um 
but yeah. Okay, the last bag question that we have is can we talk about the best first designer handbag? And I say this a lot, especially if you watch my TikToks, I, th I say this a lot, but there isn't a best first designer handbag. It's really whichever one you gravitate towards, which one you think you would use, which one's in your price range, which one fits your lifestyle. Um, because something that fits my lifestyle is not necessarily gonna fit your lifestyle. If you are someone who has to commute to work and carry your laptop, what your first designer handbag is, is going to be very different than someone who runs errands or occasionally goes out. Like they're gonna have a very different first designer handbag. In general, a few things to kind of think about are how often you're gonna use the bag. Um, make sure it's gonna be a bag that you see yourself using as every day, but also that everyday bag can be used in the evenings. Like, would you use this for date night? Would you use this to go out for the evening or whatever it is? And then also how carefree is the bag? Is it gonna be lambskin, which is obviously less carefree than regular calfskin leather, right? And then just make sure it's within your price range. If your price range is $2,500, so there's plenty of bags to get that's $2,500. You don't need to jump immediately to the $11,000 Chanel classic flap. Okay, that sums it up for the the bags let's move on to the wedding questions and i i will try to speed through some of these questions okay so starting off with one thing that surprised you with wedding planning um i would have to say that i was surprised at how many people had opinions about my wedding i think that as soon as we got engaged there were comments and and things about um where we're gonna have the wedding how many people who's gonna be there there's so many opinions that i really like didn't ask for and because i am very easily influenced and i know that about myself i also would want to like people please a little bit so i think that it, it and i'm working on tuning out some of the unnecessary comments but i think obviously this is this happens when you put your life out on the internet for everyone to see like and it's not even just people online it's like family and friends everybody has comments and thoughts about what they want you to do for your wedding that i was not expecting okay favorite wedding moment i think dress shopping and the bridesmaid proposal is probably my top two like wedding festivity like memories so far i mean obviously we haven't had the wedding yet we haven't really done too many things um but i love like my love language is giving gifts so i loved being able to spoil my bridesmaids with the bridesmaid proposal boxes and i think the dress shopping i'm one of the first brides in kind of the friend group to um you know get married and try on dresses and do all these things so i think just being able to spend time with my friends having my friends like fly from across the country to come like that was really really meaningful for me okay the next question wedding traditions that you are saying no to um this is my personal opinion this is one that i know for sure that i will not be doing um because i I'm not very good at showing affection, um, but we will not be doing a garter toss. Um, I'm sorry, but I'm not doing that in front of my parents. I'm not doing that in front of my my fiance's parents. I'm not doing that in front of my grandparents. Like we are absolutely not doing that. I think that it's, I don't even understand the tradition. So maybe <laughs> that's why, um, but yeah, the garter toss is for sure a no. I don't know too many other wedding traditions, but I'm sure as I start doing a little bit more research on like things, people are doing i think i'll be like mm, i don't think so the next question is bachelorette party have i thought about it where i want to be um i have thought about it and i think the conclusion that i've kind of come to is if we do do a bachelorette party i would like to do it like a few days leading up to the wedding because we are doing our wedding in europe and i also acknowledge that it costs a lot of money to you know fly across the world for a wedding so i'm hoping that we can do something a few days prior leading up to the wedding and then it's almost like a little extended girls trip prior to the wedding so people don't feel like they're just flying there for like a day and a half of your wedding festivities they're really flying there for a little girl's trip and then your wedding so so far that's kind of what we have planned i don't have like a specific location nailed down yet maybe the south of france maybe paris maybe london um saint tropez i don't know there's like so many places that you can go um but i think once you're already in europe it's so easy to go to different places within europe too so um maybe that but i also want to be cognizant of my bridesmaids budgets and you know all of that okay the next question is dress code for wedding guests um i think i'm going to be doing formal i actually not think i'm 
pretty sure we're going to be doing formal. Um, I want long dresses. I want people to be dressed up. You know, this is this is an event. Will I be having an unplugged ceremony? Absolutely. Yes. I've been to a few weddings and even the ones who haven't specifically said like, hey, we're doing an unplugged ceremony. In general, I find it a little bit disrespectful to be on your phone during that time, especially if you're going to be taking photos, blocking the photographer. Like I'm paying thousands of dollars for a photographer and a videographer. Um, I don't need your iPhone photos. Like respectfully, I don't need your iPhone photos. So I'm pretty sure we're going to be doing an unplugged ceremony. Um, hopefully we can get people to uh, enforce that policy, but we'll see if you have any tips and tricks and you've done this before, let me know in the comments. The best bag for attending weddings. So I actually have a video on this specifically for um, kind of like bags for brides, but also bags you can use for special events. Um, I'll leave it up here for you guys um, so you guys can see it. Okay, so the next question is what style wedding are we doing? Um, so when I was talking to my planner, I was telling her that I wanted like coastal glam. Um, I don't know if that's necessarily still the case, but we are doing a waterfront um, venue. And um, I think I still want to lean more into the glam. I think the colors we're going to choose very like classic, maybe basic colors, but it's going to be black, white, champagne, gold, um, those like my typical <laughs> color palette. Because um, I don't want to look back in 20 years and think that I did a very like um, trendy wedding. And the last question is about my ring. Why did I choose six prongs over four prongs? Um, so I have a round solitaire ring and I chose six prongs really because I liked the symmetry of it. If you're familiar with diamonds and the, the diamond, um, shopping prices and all of that stuff, you know that, um, round diamonds are actually more expensive than any other cuts. I don't know why I think round is just the most like sought after so they make it the most expensive and I feel like if I am going to get a round diamond the four prongs makes it look less round it looks less symmetrical I, I don't know this is just like this is my logic um and so when I tried on both at the same time I actually preferred the six prongs and also six prongs is a little bit more um secure for your ring as well okay the last few questions um these are more like general social media questions that I got um the first question is how do you balance being Hannah Montana and not feeling like you have no time for yourself um I 100% feel like I have no time for myself so if you guys don't know um my typical schedule is I work on the weekday so Monday nine to five whatever um that's like my regular my regular job time and then after work then I'm editing YouTube videos I'm planning content um usually that's in the evenings and then on the weekends which you're watching this now on the weekends this is when I film um I have all of my content already planned for the week all of my YouTube videos all of that so then I film on the weekends the free time that I do get I'm usually like binging TV. I think that watching TV is kind of my way of like turning off my brain. Um, or I like go and get my I do my nails. I love like doing my own nails. I actually did this last night. But um, I love doing my nails um, by myself. I feel like there's some sort of satisfaction by like doing it yourself, trying out new designs, you know, changing it up if you don't like it, you know, things like that. Um, but I don't have too too much time to myself, especially now that we're like in full wedding planning mode. But we make it work. Do I see myself making social media my full time job? Um, the answer is yes and no. I would love to. I love what I do here. I don't think I can say that I have the same passion about what I do here that I do at my regular job. Um, I don't know if I should say that or not, but that's the truth. Um, I love creating content. I love connecting with you guys. I love talking about things that I'm passionate about. And I talked about this a little bit earlier too, but the way the social media income works is it fluctuates every single month. One month I can make nothing. Another month I can make five figures it's it like fluctuates so much and being that I'm very like risk adverse I think for the time being I'm going to keep my job it's not unbearable the schedule that I do have it obviously doesn't help that we're like doing the wedding stuff and everything like that but um we make it work um I would love to do this full time though I think that there's a lot of things that I would love to do if I had time for it I would love to you know have a consignment business or maybe start my own handbag brand or do handbag accessories like I would love to build a brand for myself um, but being that we're a little bit more risk adverse, especially in this economy, I think it's smart to do both, especially if I can balance doing both. But 
I would love to. So the last question is if you were to ever leave the Bay Area, where would you go? So I have a few different options and they're all so different. So the first option, maybe the most realistic option is San Diego. I went to college in San Diego. Um, my fiance and I met in San Diego. We love it there. Most of you guys know San Diego and Bay Area, completely different vibe. I would love to live in San Diego again. We have a lot of friends there. I think it would be a great time. Um, another option, since I've never lived outside of California, I would love to move to New York. Um, it's been recently brought to my attention that New York has a rat problem. <laughs> so I don't know. I really don't know. My friend lives in uh, New York and she was telling me, granted, she like lived on the first floor for a while. She like had a bunch of rats in her apartment, like at all times. And she was, she got like very good at killing them. Um, I don't know that that could be me. So, um, maybe tentatively no to New York, but I would love to live there at some point. I feel like Maybe I could be a city girl. I don't know. And the last one is London or like just anywhere in Europe. Honestly, I feel like Europe has such a good public transportation system that I don't need to have my car. I don't need to um, figure out where to go. I can always just like walk or like hop on the tube or the subway or whatever it is and get to where I need to go. And for the weekends, if I want to jet off to Paris or Spain or somewhere else, it's such a quick flight. Okay, so that sums it up for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed i'm so sorry this was probably a really long video let me know what other questions you guys have i'll try to answer all of them in the comments below if i didn't get a chance to answer your question feel free to retype it in the comments i will try my best to get to all of the questions below um but i hope you guys enjoyed this video i'll leave another video for you guys here and i'll see you guys next time bye